Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I wanted to take a look at how to send a APRS message from JS8 Call. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Well, we've been kind of on a roll here with APRS uh, videos lately, uh, but it's been a while since I've done one with JS8 Call. Today, I want to kind of marry the two of those together. Uh, so what I want to look at is how do we send a message from JS8 Call and have it show up on an APRS-capable radio? Now, there is a way to do this uh, without having the script that I'm going to show you today installed. However, uh, the syntax can get a little complicated if you get one space out of order. Uh, not enough spaces, too many spaces, something like that. Well, the whole thing fails, and you don't even really get any feedback uh, telling you that it's going to fail. In fact, that's kind of a downside of, the, uh, of this process is you don't get any acknowledgments that the message was received. But I do find that more times than not, it goes out successfully. All right, so let's take a look at getting this thing installed. First, we're going to head over to a website. And I'll leave a link to this site uh, down in the description below so that you can find this web page pretty easy. But it's just my GitHub site. Uh, and we're going to come over to this one here, JS8APRS. So let's go ahead and click into that. And right here, be certain that you click on the raw file. If you don't, this is not going to install and work correctly for you. Uh, it's a pretty simple script. Uh, and, and I have to say thanks to Jerry for helping me get this one running. Uh, we kind of worked on this one several months back, uh, and unfortunately, I, I kind of forgot about it. Um, but let's go ahead and see if we can get this done. All right, so after you're here uh, and you click on the raw button, let's go up here to the web address, and we'll just right-click on that and copy it. Now let's head back over to the Pi. Let's go ahead and move to our desktop directory. Normally we do this uh, to the downloads directory and you can do that as well if you want to but for today I'm just going to go ahead and run this uh, from the desktop. So once we're in our desktop directory let's type wget and then paste in that web address that we just got. And go ahead and hit the return key. Give that just a couple of seconds and it will uh, download everything. So now, uh, if we list it out, you'll be able to see right here is the script we just downloaded. We need to make that executable. So let's use sudo chmod plus x js8aprs. Go ahead and hit return. Oh, and you have to type things correctly. So let's try that again. Uh, plus x. JS8 APRS. Hey, I like that one better this time. All right, clear that. Well, shoot, I can't type. All right, clear that screen out and let's list that again. You'll see now it's in green, meaning that it is executable. Okay, so the one thing you need uh, already started up is JS8 call. You'll see mine is here and running. So to run the script, we want to type dot forward slash JS8 APRS and go ahead and hit the return key. And the first thing it's going to ask you is uh, what's the address? What's the call sign that the message is going to and to include the SSID? So in this case, we'll use my mobile, which uh, is KM4ACK with an SSID of 9. We'll hit the return key. And it's going to ask us, what is the message, and to keep it brief. Now, keeping it brief uh, is, is twofold here. First, APRS messages, by design, are supposed to be short messages. I can't remember the exact character limit, but fairly brief messages. Second, uh, JS8 call, it takes a while to transmit uh, messages. So even something that's very brief can take up to uh, 60 to 90 seconds to transmit. So we'll just say test JS8 to APRS uh, and the Jeep. And we'll go ahead and hit the return key. The last thing it's going to ask is what is the sequence number? This is something that the APRS system needs. Uh, but we can make up any two-digit number here that we'd like. So let's just use, oh, I don't know, say 05. 
and we'll go ahead and hit the return key again. Now you'll see that it tells you to go to JS8 call to transmit the message when this window closes. Uh, so the window is actually not going to close in this particular case. I'll show you another way to run it where this window will close. But it is sending the message over to JS8 call, and when it's done, it's going to dump us back out to the command prompt. Uh, so that takes a couple of seconds, and we're back at the command prompt now. So let's go over to JS8 call, and you'll see our message here ready to transmit. So let's briefly break this down. What we're doing is we're sending a message to all calls, so it's going out to everybody. Whoever hears it, We'll send that message to the APRS system, more specifically to my call sign with the SSID of dash nine. Now, uh, note here that there's a couple of spaces after the nine before the colon, and the number of spaces depends on the length of the call sign. Uh, if I remember right, the total number of characters in this section of the message has to equal nine. So if you've got a shorter call sign, you're going to pad it with more spaces on the right. Uh, a longer call sign uh, will be less spaces on the right. Then we have our test message here to the Jeep. And finally, we've got that uh, sequence number right here at the end, the 05. So let's go ahead and start transmitting that out. And guys, the what I was talking about with the spaces right here in this section... Uh, that's why I recommend just using the script. It's, it's why the script was originally written. Uh, it, it just makes it easy to make sure that you've got the syntax correct and you don't have to remember exactly how many characters or how many spaces or this or that to make this thing work. Uh, the one downside to this is there's no acknowledgement that comes back through JSA call to tell you that the message was accepted into the APRS system. More times than not, I find that it works, but occasionally, uh, you know, there's nobody out there to receive the station, and there's no feedback that that message was or was not accepted. Uh, so, kind of one of the downsides uh, to using JS8 Call to send uh, any type of message, e emails, text messages, or APRS messages. Uh, you never get a, re a reply, an acknowledgement for the messages you've sent. But hey, if it's the only uh, if it's the only thing you've got, then it uh, it's worth a shot because, like I said, I do find that it works more times than not. All right, it looks like that our message has been sent out, and you can see that the message was successfully received on my uh, FTM 400 in the Jeep. So let's cover one other thing real quick uh, before we head off today. I'm gonna go ahead and just close out of this terminal window. And you'll see that script right here on our desktop. Now, this is kind of one of the reasons that I downloaded it to the desktop instead of the normal downloads directory. If we double click on this, it's going to give you this little pop-up window here. And if we say execute in terminal, you'll get the exact same thing uh, that you saw earlier in the terminal message. So we're not gonna do a complete retransmit, but I do wanna show you this. Um, and a sequence number there, we'll give it 02 this time. And if you'll hang on just a second until it uh, gets over to uh, JS8 call, you'll see that this window will automatically close in this case. So it kind of depends on the way you run it as to whether it will uh, auto close or not. So in this case, the window auto closed. And if we open it up, there's our message ready to go out again. All right, guys, give us a thumbs up before you head off. Be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And we will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.